So good morning, everybody. Welcome to the, oh my gosh, this is July, July Technical Committee of the Mr. Uh, County Transportation Council. Um, we'll go around and do introductions. Um, my name is Dennis Doyle. I'm the planning director. And the main reason I'm doing this is for people on the phone. And I am Brian Slack, Principal Transportation Planner, Ulster County Transportation Council. Ed Pine, Ulster County DPW. Herb Lips, Ulster County Legislature. John Morrow, Town of Ulster. Vernon Benjamin, Town of Sully Creek. And Sandra Johnson, New York State Department of Transportation. Who do we have on the phone, please? We're on the Zoom meeting. Hi, this is Shelly Johnston with Creighton Manning Engineering. Hi, Shelly. Good morning. And Chris Kate from McFarland Johnson. Good morning. Good morning, Chris. And Amy McKenzie, New York State Department of Transportation. Great. Welcome, everyone. Anybody else? No, that's everyone. Oh, wow. Okay. All right. July meeting. So, a call for citizens' comments. Any citizens' comments? Anyone on the phone? Hearing none. Approval of the March 23rd, 2021 Technical Committee meeting summary. Can I have a motion for approval, please? No move. I have a second. 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 Any discussion? The motion was by Bernie Benjamin. The second was by John Morrow. Thank you. Sorry, we're any discussion? shorthanded. Okay, hearing yeah. none. All in favor? Any opposed? Any abstentions? Thank you, so carried. There, there was a sign-in sheet in the box, Dennis. Is that going around? I think we can got it. I think we have it. Well, yeah, one more comment. Oh, great. We can do communications and announcements. Communications and announcements, Brian? Sure, uh, a few announcements. We, I'm happy to report uh, that Governor Cuomo announces Empire State Trail improvements in New Paltz. Uh, this was a press release dated July 22nd. The project will improve 3.5 additional miles of the Wallkill Valley Rail Trail. Uh, I believe this is utilizing leftover Empire State Trail funding. Um, and the trail segment was selected um, partially at least because of a completed plan by UCTC, the Wolf, Wallkill Valley Rail Trail Op Community Opportunity Plan. So I believe the uh, improvements will include intersections uh, along that 3.5 mile stretch, as well as surface improvements and uh, basically improving the intersections to bring it up to uh, a basic standard, watch your step, um, uh, throughout that project area. So we're really happy to see that. I'd also... Who's doing the project? Uh, OSI? Right, OSI. Is, is, OSI is, is acting as, as agents uh, and they're hiring the engineering people doing all the... Oh, yeah, nice. it's, a, it's a really nice, they've done a lot of trail projects. Um, I mean, talking to Rob, Bob Anderberg from the from OSI, their, their board is committed to active trail projects and managing Managing trail projects, so they're they're in a you know they've got like seventy some projects going Great. You know, throughout the region. So they're you know they're basically having a significant amount of expertise now in terms of managing trails projects, and they manage the Walkville Valley improvements from New Paltz to Kingston. Uh, and I'm passing that press release around for your information. I'd also like to make uh, members aware that. This September, the UCTC will be uh, partaking in what is called the Triennial Review, which is uh, a review by, that is conducted by the US Department of Transportation, Federal Highway and Federal Transit Administrations um, of MPOs throughout the state, throughout the nation. These occur every three years and our numbers come up. I believe it was supposed to occur last year as scheduled, but due to COVID, there was a, a year delay, so we're conducting it this year. The uh, review is conducted in close coordination, and essentially in concert with Dutchess County Transportation Council and Orange County Transportation Council. Um, we have been requested uh, by the two uh, federal 
administrations to provide preliminary information regarding a uh, set list of um, subject areas, including areas that were reviewed and brought to our attention four years ago uh, and how we've uh, addressed them over the course of the past three years. There was a cover letter that was submitted to us. I apologize, I grabbed the wrong sheet on my way out, but we are in the process of responding to that request for information. We'll be submitting a, a information packet to them this Friday as a group, the three MPOs together acting as the TMA. Um, and then later this September, the review is a three-day review. It's pretty intensive review of all elements of the metropolitan planning process among each MPO. And we have to keep in mind the transportation management area process as well. So we'll keep you informed. There is an opportunity for public input. In the past, we have asked members to participate as just members of the audience, so to speak, and provide any input to uh, the federal agencies that might be required. So we will keep you uh, apprised of that process. Um, yeah. This is an important review process because it certifies that the MPO has met its requirements under the federal federal regulations. And um, you really need to, we really need to make sure that we you know that we don't have any findings uh, relative to UCTC or, or even the TMA as a whole. So the, the three entities have been in significant discussions with that. I think one of the things that we have at least some concern about Sandra is uh, we have um, a question about performance measures and what we're doing with respect to performance measures. So we don't have any idea how you folks choose things relative to being on the tip. And so any insight that the department can have that you can share with us about, I mean, we're following statewide performance measures. So the, how the region is essentially choosing projects to be on the tip that are in accordance with meeting those statewide performance measures would help the uh, the MPO and its response. Okay. Yeah. Is that, um, Mark sent me an email this morning. I didn't get to look at the attachment. I think that yet. could be it, yeah. And he said he had some questions. Is, are you guys expecting a turnaround by Friday? No, I don't think oh, by Friday, okay. but I think <laughs> as, as we go into the triennial review, All right. you know, we, we, we don't have a lot of transparency on the projects that you hand us. And so, oh, we can get you something. Okay. Yeah, we, we, yeah, I think that would help the, as, as a region, it would help us a lot. Yeah. 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 Okay. Those are all the communications and announcements I have. Any communications or announce? Oh, what about the TAC? Right. We did announce during the, actually, no, we did. It's interesting. Uh, during the last policy meeting, um, the announcement for the transportation alternatives program came out the very next day. So we did, we knew it was coming, but we had no idea how soon. Um, that uh, um, grant opportunity was announced by the New York State DOT about three, four weeks ago. Transportation Alternatives Program has, I believe it's six different categories for, for potential projects. Um, typically, uh, trails are, are one of the major categories, but there are a variety of other categories. I apologize, I don't have the solicitation in front of me, but there are a variety of um, uh, possible project areas that can be submitted from um, streetscape design projects uh, and other types of uh, improvements, transportation alternative improvements. So that announcement did go out through the UCTC uh, distribution list uh, three weeks ago. It is a 80% federal supported award with a required 20% local match for any awards. I believe the project minimum is 500,000. Um, I, I would, if it's not 500,000, I would strongly suggest that any projects submitted be at a minimum of 500,000. So we did send that notice out. Um, if you're going to apply, please reach out to the MPO um, and we'd be happy to talk you through. You will need an engineering uh, estimate. Uh, in order to make that application. Uh, so just be aware of that. Um, we're, we're fairly certain that the city of Kingston is gonna apply. We've actually been talking to the city of Kingston relative to a, a, a sidewalk project. 
Um, we're not sure if there's anyone else in the county that's going to apply. The county is also thinking about applying for um, a uh, adding a link to the uh, UND corridor um, up in the up in the Phoenicia area, up in the Pine Hill area. So we're also having that discussion. Uh, we're also in discussions with respect to CFA application for that link as well under the Recreational Trails Program. Um, so that that's, that's a study that we, we just completed that UND quarter study. So we're looking at that. I mean, in the past, I think uh, Vernon Sogarty's has applied for a sidewalk out Washington Avenue. Um, the village. I mean, the, maybe the village area. Yeah, yeah they, I, I don't know who, someone in Sogarty's, I believe they applied for that out out there. That's not a bad, that's not a bad application um, to think about as well. Um, just be aware of that. Yeah. Because there's issues about that. As you know, I'm sure. Yeah. Okay. All right. But uh, TAP is, you know, TAP is something you need to think about. Is anyone applying for CFA money as well? Anybody applying for CFA grants? Um, I know the uh, OSI asked the town of Rochester for yeah. a letter. Um, it's a master plan for the for the O and W. For the O and W. Uh, yeah, uh, they're calling it a feasibility study. Yeah. But um, <coughs> we we adopted that uh, resolution, resolution of support last yeah. night. Yeah. Support yeah. last night, and uh, and we got that to Bob Anderberg. Um, I wrote a letter just so the council knows. I wrote a letter of support from the, the transportation council for that project as well because it's consistent with our non-motorized transportation. You know what the amount of funding they're asking for is? We didn't supply that. Three hundred thousand. Yeah. So it is applying for a placement of his children. And they want us ice cream. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I'm not involved in it. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. Anything else on communications and announcements, Brian? No, not at this time. Okay. So new business. We're all prepared to move on to new business. UCTC resolution 2021-06. Allocation of previously unallocated Federal Transit Administration FDA Section 5307 formula funds for re, uh, for regional transit projects. I'm going to take some of this. Can I have a motion for discussion purposes? Mike Baden. Mr. Baden, do I have a second? Second. Thank you, Mr. Moore. I have a motion and a second. From a discussion standpoint, um, the, the TMA uh, generates about three point about 28 between 19 and 21 million dollars of transit funding under something called an NTD program. Um, and that money is allocated by a specific methodology that's been adopted by the both, all three councils, transportation councils. Um, and that brings money back to the private sector commuter carriers as well as the public uh, designated recipients in both Orange, Ulster, and, and Dutchess. Um, as well as the MTA, which is also a designated recipient as well. Uh, but what it does do is it takes about 10% of those funds, um, sometimes a little more, sometimes a little less, depends upon the preventive maintenance needs of the private carriers, and it sets them aside as unallocated. And then every, I would say every three to five years, um, we do a call for projects, recognizing that the demand for transportation for transit infrastructure is lumpy. Um, and, it, and it takes big money to, to, to sort of to sort of fix problems or, or meet capital needs in transit. So we did a call for projects. We allocated about $15 million uh, in unallocated funds um, to be utilized for for um, to call for projects. Uh, we had five. That's right. Projects, and out of those five projects, uh, two were deemed um, not worthy of further consideration. Right? They Essentially, were not eligible. Right, they were ineligible. Yeah, and and so the three that remained were essentially Orange, uh, Dutchess County for repairs to its garage, uh, Ulster County with respect to uh, work on its, uh, its 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 facilities, administrative and, and facilities, as well as beginning work on design for its uh, upcoming use for a bus storage facility, and then uh, MTA with respect to a two hundred million dollar project. Uh, which they requested, I think, somewhere in the neighborhood of five million or something like that. Which would, but um, and that was for signal upgrades for the MTA. Um, and the awards are about 
4.2 million for Dutchess County, about 4 million for Ulster County and about 3.7. No, the awards are listed in detail in attachment one, which is page three. That was close, Dennis. Uh, Dutchess County was 4.4. Um, MTA was 4.1 and Ulster County was 4 million. Those are the uh, requests. Uh, and, so, and this still leaves an unallocated balance. Uh, for, yeah, it's close. Yeah, it's close. Well, we, we have an unallocated, we haven't, it's a little over, I think, as I recall. Um, so um, we still have an unallocated balance that we wanted to, we wanted to preserve. Um, and then we still are going to get money for the 2020 and 2021 um, rollout of funds as soon as we hear back from the state. Um, so we're in good shape from a transit funding perspective, uh, and that's why we're doing this. And all of the applications were reviewed by the three, uh, a committee of the three MPOs um, with, a, with a unanimous recommendation for the awards. So that's the explanation here. And again, if you look at uh, page three, uh, of draft resolution 21-6. There's a full summary of the funding available, the distribution and remaining funds. Any questions? Mike? No? Okay. So all in favor? Aye. Uh, any opposed? Any abstentions? So carried, thank you. Item B, draft resolution 2021-07, support for the New York State Department of Transportation, NISDOT, targets for safety performance measures. Do I have a motion for discussion purposes? So moved. Thank you, Vernon. Uh, thank John. you, John, I'm sorry. Do I have a second? Thank you, Vernon, I apologize. Uh, so, uh, Brian? Certainly. <clears throat> Transportation performance management has been something that's been in place for a number of years now. All MPOs throughout the country are required to um, participate in this process. Uh, there are a variety of different uh, subject areas, including infrastructure, transit safety, and the resolution in front of us today is regarding um, safety performance measures. Um, You'll note in the description in the agenda, as well as included directly in the resolution, um, the UCTC is required to update its safety performance measures on an annual basis. Um, for some of the other measurements, we don't need to update them annually. It's only as needed for the other measurements, but um, the safety requirement is a annual requirement. Um, every year, the uh, New York State uh, Governor's Traffic Safety Board updates uh, a new target. Those targets are delivered to the New York State DOT, and the New York State DOT then requests MPOs statewide to adopt the statewide target. And that is the purpose of the resolution in front of us today. Um, there is a fact sheet that I provided uh, as well that really does a better job explaining um, how the targets are developed and arrived at, and um, what a rolling target is. Um, the fact sheet looks like this, and I'll try to bring it up on screen in a moment. Um, essentially, this is a five-year, thank you, Dennis. Uh, this is a five-year rolling target. So we take the latest five years of data available on the various um, um, performance measures. Those performance measures include the number of fatalities. These are statewide measures, bear in mind, statewide measures. Um, number of fatalities, the rate of fatalities, so that's um, the number of fatalities per 100 million vehicle miles traveled to give um, uh, a normalization of that statistic to help make more sense out of it. And then we go to serious injuries, and again, the rate of serious injuries, and then finally, the number of non-motorized fatalities and non-motorized serious injuries. So the latest five years of data are used to generate a target. The oldest year is dropped and the newest year is added on. And when we do that, we're able to develop a trend. On page two, it shows trend lines um, for the data for each of these target areas. Um, and you'll note that over the course of the past five years of data, I believe that data is 2015 through 2019. 
we are showing a year-to-year uh, -year, uh, declining rate, which is, of course, good news. Um, I believe there's a number of reasons behind the decline, uh, at least partially is a decrease in uh, vehicle miles traveled statewide. Fewer miles on the road means fewer crashes overall. Uh, I think as time goes on, we've certainly noted that you probably heard in the news during the pandemic, uh, crash rates have gone up for a variety of reasons, some of which are still um, unknown, but fatalities on the road and including I think among uh, pedestrians and cyclists did go up during the pandemic. Um, so that's something that we will likely see uh, in the years ahead as we continue to measure uh, these trends. So the only other thing to note uh, regarding the forecast is that we create, um, we use our baseline five years of data uh, to develop a forecast, but because um, statistics being what they are, we could see the trend line uh, as we see right now, if we project forward to year 2022, we're projecting a very significant decline just following the trend line of 10% for fatalities and 10% for, um, uh, or 3% decline for serious injuries. That's probably not a realistic goal. Um, that's just the trend line. So the um, federal regulations require um, state departments of transportation to put a cap, a 1% cap on the predicted target. So there is a 1% cap on the target for 2022. So you'll note in the chart, the New York State DOT target for 2022 is um, number of fatalities at 1,005 total um, and a fatality rate of 0.818. Um, that is a very brief explanation of the safety performance target. Again, the resolution uh, suggests or requests that we adopt the state targets rather than use our own Ulster County targets um, for the uh, performance measure. One question. Sure. Is this over all roads within the county? I believe it's only on the, wait, no, the crash rate I believe is system. No, it's all crashes. All crashes. All crashes. Yeah. And it's so it's it's not just the county; it's the state. It's, these statistics are uh, developed statewide. Anything else, Bernie? I have a couple of questions. Uh, you mentioned uh, during the pandemic the accident rate went up. Is there any relationship with the vehicle, vehicle miles traveled? Did they go up or down? Or well, I haven't seen the data because vehicle miles traveled certainly did go down as well, but crashes did go up. There's some anecdotal evidence that I've heard only just through the media, um, no uh, research papers yet, that uh, it may be because people are driving, there are fewer people on the road, so people are driving faster and taking greater risks uh, during, um, during the lockdown. Um, but it's really a, a real question as to what exactly was occurring. And don't forget, it's based on millions of miles traveled. So if the crash rate remains relatively steady and you have a significant drop in miles traveled, the rates come down. Mm -hmm. And we suspect that, that we didn't do any counts because there was, I mean, for us, us folks that went to work, there was just nobody there. We would drive the roads every morning and there was nobody yeah, on the right. Yeah, so. So it's not based on actual behavior. We don't, well, we, we, don't, we don't know yet. No. We yeah, we're not, we're not there. Yeah. Next year, we'll start to see the results. Any, any other questions? Anything else, Bernie? I did. Uh, a little more subtle, uh, and uh, I'm not good at subtle, but I'm going to try. The, uh, <laughs> is there another like uh, performance measure that, that like, rises just below these? This, this deals with fatalities and serious injuries. And yet I can perceive of, uh, uh, incidents that could occur that uh, show a pattern of uh, minor accidents that suggest a uh, serious cause of concern. I think that happened with uh, Thruway and Sogamese and uh, the concerns that the firemen and the police and everybody were raised. And it was finally, and it was addressed very well so far by the DOT, but it took a while, uh, if I may. And uh, I wonder if uh, a performance measure like this at that level might have helped to address that more quickly or at least focus on it a little better. So um, 
I, I hear what you're saying. I think coming, this is from me, I think coming from the, from the feds in terms of the performance measures from the state, the focus is on fatalities and serious injuries. That doesn't mean that the MPO is not focused on other types of accidents that occur. And one of the things that we are doing is we're, we're in the process of completing a countywide safety study. So that countywide safety study looks at all types of crashes. Um, and, and then it takes a look at where those crashes, what, what areas, intersections and segments of roads where those crashes occur that are above the statewide average. So while there's not quote a performance measure, we're concerned about it and we're looking at those areas. And one of the things that, we, um, that we've done and talked to this council about um, is, um, is looking at how those areas can be fixed. And this, the, that study should be done, I would think by the end of this month or early or early next month for release. Um, and you're gonna see a characterization of crashes by road types. Um, you're gonna see a characterization of crashes by, um, uh, by types of crash. Uh, and there's there's a there's a wealth of charting information in there. And then what we did is we pulled out we did we did what, what I would call the David Letterman. We pulled out the top ten the top ten areas. Um, we did five on on road segments, <clears throat> excuse me, and five on intersections. Um, and and we didn't do that we didn't do that in terms of in terms of saying, well these are the worst areas. What we did that <clears throat> we did it across the range of. Uh, a range of, of, of types of, of types of uh, roads that, where they occurred on. I mean, if we just did it on, on severity, it would be all state roads. Um, so we did it across the range of roads. And, and the interesting thing when we did that, um, we, we identified, we happened to identify one of the areas in Gardner where there was a recent, recent fatality. Um, and we used, we, and we had data on that, but you'll see that data out there. And to answer your question is, is while it's not an adopted performance measure, the count the council in its in its planning program has moved to essentially look at those areas where there are crashes that occur that are above the statewide average and what we should do about them. I would also say that the state does a similar thing for its um, for its road systems with respect to high accident locations and high and and, and priority accident what they call pills and house um, and they're they're done on an annual basis. I'm, that's my understanding that they're done on an annual basis as well. So there's a look at it, even though there's not a quote performance measure out there. Okay. And then when we make decisions with respect to tips, we'll make decisions on, on looking at, at, at where those where those things occur. Um, I will tell you in, in Ulster County, the number one uh, concern with respect to crashes is run off the road. That's the number, I mean, it, it outshines, you know, in many instances, 40 or 50%. Um, and very interestingly, some of the areas where you think you'd have high crash rates because of substandard features in the road, you find out the crash rates are very strangely related to some other factor. Animals. Yeah. I mean, the classic example is uh, the concern at the Golden Hill intersection with Route 32 in the city of Kingston. Um, we did an analysis of the accidents that occurred there. I think there were seven in five years and four of them were related to, were related to deer. <laughs> and you just look at it and say, that's, you, you know, but the point being is, is that there's some there's some good data being developed on, on this, and we'll continue to look at how that relates in terms of people looking at uh, at tip projects, um, and 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 working with the state as we did in Saugerties, working with the state to use that accident data and crash data to make a case for for needed improvements. Um, and I think we got an excellent response from the state in in Saugerties. Oh, yeah, that's, that's it's ongoing, but certainly it's yeah. Yeah. Um, things down. Dennis, is, is that data maintained for all roads, including local? We where there was the, where the, the crash data, we did look at local roads. It definitely looked at local roads. Right. So we do have that data. The difficulty in the crash data for local roads is the estimate of volume. Right. Yeah. So when you look at you look at local roads with respect to how they fare in terms of statewide averages, we may have not had volume information. We did look at local roads. I'm just just curious, and this this was an ongoing discussion in our town board a while ago about um, uh, pavement marking on local roads. Yeah, mm -hmm. as, as, as you know, very few, if any, local roads have side lines and center lines. And I'm told by our former highway superintendent, there's a really good reason for that. But uh, probably most of them are substandard. 
exactly. And he yeah. said, in terms of maintenance of it as mm -hmm. well, that it, when it's it's a high cost to keep those maintained, especially on the, on the edges, the shoulders. Uh, but um, I was just curious if that factored into it with you know the drive offs or things like that. I, I don't know what the rates were relative to local roads versus county roads. I just don't know. I don't have a, a good handle on that on that data. Okay. Um, I would say that the that um, warning signs and, and signage is, is is a critical concern that the county has, uh, and we're looking at we've we've done a look at our our entire sign inventory with the idea that if, as we go through, we're going to upgrade our signs, and you have a federal responsibility with respect to. What's it called? Retro reflectivity. Thank you. Retro re reflectivity to for, for the signs to be upgraded to meet those to meet those. We're headed. The county is headed in that direction. It has a capital program that essentially fixes signs on a regular basis. Try trying to. We have about eleven thousand signs, you know, at a county level for four hundred some odd miles of road. So from Chevron signs to to, to curve signs, etc. And there's some science to this that we need to do, but that's off the topic. But. But I think we should schedule uh, probably for the September meeting uh, a presentation of the results of our uh, crash study that we did, the countywide crash study, because it is, I think, a, for us as an MPO, this is a landmark study. Um, it, it's brought forth quite a bit of information and data crunching, and the results mm. are, are pretty solid. So um, I think David would very much like to present that information to everyone in September. Um, so that we have a motion and a second on the resolution. Any additional discussion? All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Any abstentions? Thank you. Item C, draft resolution 21-08, amendment to Ocean County Transportation Council State Fiscal Year 2021-22 Unified Plan Work Program to add a new project as shown in attachment one. And that new project is uh, website updates. Um, and so if I can get a motion for discussion purposes. So moved. Thank you, Mr. Moore. Do I have a second? Second, my base. Thank you, Mr. Bates. I have a motion and a second. Any discussion, Brian? Uh, just uh, a point of order, a correction in the resolution. It says page one of three. This is a two-page resolution. There are no missing pages. It's just an error in the pagination. Um, Regarding resolution 21-8, yes, we have identified the need to do a website update for several years now. Uh, well, the entire Ulster County website, Ulster County government website was updated, I don't know, six or seven years ago, was it? <clears throat> and that was a pretty comprehensive and pretty significant undertaking. And since then, our own UCTC webpage has gotten a little long in the tooth. We keep more documents on our web page, at least as many as any other department in Ulster County government. And there are obviously a wide variety of subject matter from transit to safety to trail studies and then just information studies and then our major documents as well. It's become difficult for us to find documents on our own web page. It's, it's an insider's web page so to speak. If you want to find a document, you have to know where to look. I mean, if you're a member of the general public trying to find a, a study or or any material on it, it's just not it's just not the way to, to do things. And it has it has issues with respect to uh, ADA compatibility as well. Um, um, and we've been in discussions with our IS department about where we are at as a county update. Um, and we're of the opinion that we're we're not going to get anywhere soon, and so we're going to take it on our own. Um, we would still be hosted by the county, but uh, we would uh, we would do this um, as a as a separate um, a separate website, and that's not unusual. The, the tourism website is done that way. The board of elections website was recently updated. Sheriff's department. Sheriff's department. And so uh, we would move in that we would move in that direction, um, I, and, and we're we're literally being forced to on on some of the and some of the, uh, the ADA issues. I would also add that during our last triennial review, um, it was noted by the Federal Highway Administration that they would like the MPOs to really have their own standalone site 
and essentially brand, even if you are hosted by a county government, which several MPOs are hosted either by county governments or by, or by transit authorities, they would like the MPOs to show a certain level of autonomy. So they, they recommend that we have our own standalone website as well. So the revision as proposed um, is to transfer, transfer $35,000 in our FHWA savings from savings into the uh, program, and which would still leave us with an unprogrammed balance, i.e. savings of $278,000, just over $278,000. Um, well, um, we have not done an independent cost analysis. I have received some anecdotal information from web developers that thirty thousand dollars would be uh, would get you a very good website. So the thirty thousand dollars is for consultant procurement, and then the five thousand dollars in addition is for staff support for our time. I think it's probably very appropriate that we have control over our website rather than somebody else. We know what we need. You know what you need to find things, and uh, obviously we have the money to do it properly. So I think we should go ahead and do that. And I would make a motion to that effect. Thank, Thank you, Mr. Moore. Do I have a second? I'll second that motion. Right there. Sorry, that's okay. <laughs> I drew a blank. You just heard her voice from a distance. Yeah. I get yeah. it. <laughs> so it was her for a while. Um, thank you, Mr. Brown. <laughs> I have a motion to second. Any additional discussion? Can we go do home computers in this? <laughs> we're, we're, doing, we're working well, it's a different topic, but we're also working with the reapportionment committee to do that. Do oh, those well, yeah. um, I have a motion to second. Any additional discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any abstentions? Other old business problems? Sure. Um, I'd like to bring your attention now to, um, I, we, we only made a few copies. I'll circulate mine. It's called the Draft Performance and Expenditure Report for the previous state fiscal year, 2020 to 2021. This is um, a requirement uh, of MPOs that has more or less been in place for some time. And I think the, the latest interpretation by our friends at the Federal Highway Administration, the Federal Transit Administration, have brought us to this point where now they would like us to see, um, to provide to them on an annual and semi-annual basis, this performance and expenditure report. It's essentially an accounting of all the work we do on an annual basis. And it follows the outline of our unified planning work program, which is, um, uh, obviously our work program for the state fiscal year. Um, so this uh, has not been accepted by uh, NISDOT, FHWA and FTA at this point, it is still draft and I'm awaiting um, to receive feedback from uh, the New York State DOT. New York State DOT uh, Planning Bureau in Albany does a preliminary review for us, which is a very nice courtesy review before we then submit it to the FHWA and FTA. Um, so as you review it, uh, I, I've not yet posted this onto our website, but I will very, I'm just waiting to get the approval from NISDOP before I do that. Um, but it provides again, a full accounting and summary of all the work that we've done um, throughout uh, the state fiscal year. You'll see there's a section this is for each task area outlined in the UPWP. We provide actual performance, the work we did. Um, uh, all, some areas, there's a great amount of detail. In other areas, we really didn't necessarily do a lot of work, and that information is provided. Progress in meeting schedules is provided, status of expenditures, and any revisions or uh, other supporting data uh, on the individual task item. I should note that in some areas you'll find that there is a fiscal summary at the uh, conclusion of the report. In some task areas, we do go over the uh, anticipated budget and in some areas we go under. Um, because we have uh, an overall PL budget 
we are able to draw funds from other task areas. Um, so we are not in the traditional sense over budget. Um, we might just be over the amount of time we allocated to the specific task. Uh, usually it's because staff is spending more time than we anticipated, um, but um, we're able to account for it uh, through our timesheets and through the uh, financial summary. So we don't necessarily get penalized for that. So, um, any questions? Yeah, thank you. Okay. Anything else, Brian? Um, that's everything for the performance and expenditure reports. You already uh, announced the transportation alternatives program. Update. That's right. We don't need that. UCT chief project updates? Um, off the top of my head, I want to do two. Why don't, don't you go ahead, okay. Dennis? Go ahead. So, um, we remember that one of the things that was programmed in our um, EPWP this uh, the year was a resiliency study. Um, we have um, selected a consultant. It's um, GZA uh, with about 15 different corporate names, but they're out of they're out of New York or Massachusetts, depending upon the corporate offices. Uh, combined with Cambridge Systematics, which has done a lot of work in this effort. Um, and uh, that contract has gone through the, the county legislature for approval, has been approved. It's about $113,000. Um, um, and it will be the second of its kind by an MPO in the state of New York. So we're not on a cutting edge, but we're certainly we're certainly leading it. Um, and one of the things that we're going to do, which ties into our website update, is um, we negotiated with the consultant with respect to how to present the data. Uh, resiliency work is is um, map intensive. Uh, we're actually going to we're actually going to use an Arc Hub site. Uh, and Arc Hub is a is a Esri based website that essentially allows you to do interactive mapping on it, um, as well as um, a number of other things, public public information work as well. So we're going to establish. The county IS department has uh, an ARCUB license, um, and we're having that discussion as whether we should have a separate ARCUB license or not um, for this. Uh, it comes with our with our standard um, enrollment with respect to ArcGIS. If anybody knows what ArcGIS is, um, so we, we we have a basic a basic uh, ability to do that. Uh, but we're going to build this study not on paper or not in PDF. We're going to build this study on, a, on an ARC on an ARC website, um, and we're taking some direction from this with the way Dutchess County built its its moving forward long range transportation plan. Um, I actually think, and we've told Dutchess County this, that that is a that should receive national recognition. That is that good. Uh, and so when we saw that, we saw what they did. The thought being is, is that this was a study, the resiliency study was a way that um, to get that information out there and allow the public and the decision makers to understand it a lot better than a document with static maps in it. Um, and the good thing about this is as, as things change, climate change happens, we can update the mapping uh, and update and update it with any disasters that occur, et cetera. There's a number of, um, of standards that we're using in this uh, from FHWA and, and from the state in terms of uh, how to how to uh, measure resiliency. Um, and we think we have a really good consultant team. Uh, we have, there's a gentleman from um, from Cambridge Systematics, it's pretty impressive. Um, and GZA has done quite a bit of work in yeah. Ulster County, um, contracted through New York City uh, Department of Environmental yeah. Protection in the watershed. Yeah. So we're, we, we, we're, we're looking forward to, to starting that study. Um, and so that's the that's the one thing I want to report. The other thing is is that um, we skipped 2020 with respect to our traffic counts. We're in the process of putting uh, Tri-State back under contract with respect to starting traffic counts. We'll do quite a few traffic counts this year, assuming that we can actually get them because they're going to be pretty busy. Everybody's playing catch up with respect to traffic counts um, because we didn't count in 2020, mainly because we didn't think the counts were going to be uh, valid uh, in 2020. So we're going to start that work. We will be doing some uh, pedestrian counts as well. Uh, and, and we've been asked to, to look at some areas with respect to pedestrian counts. So those are myovision counts, I think they're called. Yeah, it's a camera system. Camera. So we'll, we will be doing some of those. Um, 
Anything else I'm missing, Brian? Oh, I know. The UND? The, yeah, the UND quarter study. Yeah. UND quarter study is, is about <laughs> to be completed. Um, we have, um, we expect that by the end of this month. Yeah, any day now, really. Any day. Um, we, we also developed a, um, we also developed a uh, brochure for that study uh, that details what the study, what the study does, what the, <clears throat> what the uh, opportunities are. And we're going to use that essentially to uh, go to our funding sources. Under, understanding that the area that we're trying to, we're talking about in terms of gaps actually connects a significant portion of state land. It runs from essentially a high mount through the Bel Air Ski Center down to through the Bel Air Day use area on 28 and down and down to Giggle Hollow where the state has now has a wild forest area where they've acquired about 12, 1200 acres uh, and they're putting material. So this is a major connector through there. We anticipate asking both ORTA and DEC for funding uh, for this and hopefully we'd like to start design sometime next year if we can line up the funding sources. Um, so we want to move essentially from uh, feasibility to design in a rather, rather rapid fashion out here. Um, so that's out there. And then the other thing that we're looking at uh, is railroad safety, particularly in the, in the city of Kingston. Um, this was originally started to focus on railroad safety as it related to intersections. Um, but the city has gotten a number of grants and has proceeded to do work on Flatbush and Foxhall Avenue with respect to railroad safety. And they're programming projects for that now with, with, um, with the state. Um, so we're going to focus on railroad safety with respect to adjoining land uses because a lot of our fatalities in the city are, are not occurring at intersections. They're occurring about people sneaking onto the tracks and, and, and getting hacked that way. Uh, we have a we really want to take a look at that and see where those where those um, where those uh, opportunities lie to improve rail safety. Um, to give you an example, they built the uh, Empire State Trail runs along Greenhill Avenue in the city of Kingston, right adjacent to the railroad tracks. There is a fence that was actually put up against the against the railroad tracks to keep the keep people off of it. Unfortunately. Across the railroad tracks and over the river, you get to the YMCA. So the fence was cut on them almost immediately. Um, so we, so it, it is a it is a question of of uh, it's not necessarily a border wall question, but it is a question that we need to think about in terms of people want to get someplace. They're probably going to find a way to get that. So you may want to think about monitoring and doing something of that in those, in those areas. What about education? Just knowing pedestrian safety. They always talk about the three E's. I don't know. I'm a, I, I'm not, I don't I'm disagree a big with proponent you. Yep. of the three E's. So I'm just wondering if there's a yep. component there, especially if, like if you catch them really early, like as you know, in the schools. Yep. Um, and just thinking like city atmosphere, you know, you probably have a lot of schools um, where you might be able to do some sort of education program. You know? I, I will say I, we did participate. There was a task force that was assembled um, by the city at the request of the city safety officer that included um, Mr. Frangella from the Federal Highway Administration, CSX uh, representatives, and uh, Dave Corrigan, as, along with many others. And we identified the need for education. And we essentially did, for lack of a better word, a sting operation, where this is a very common cut through in the city of Kingston. I'm sure it's been a cut through for generations of kids trying to get from the YMCA to Greenkill Avenue. And um, we met with um, other, um, there are a variety of uh, people after school who are waiting for kids to cross at that area. They were not detained or anything, but they provided uh, a safety message. And that safety message was delivered in the school that day. Um, how effective was it? It has to be sustained over time, obviously, for it to be effective. Yeah. I will say with the new fence, we are really happy to see it go up. It was almost, as Dennis mentioned, immediately cut. And it's been a cat and mouse game ever since. Whenever I see it cut and rolled back, I'll call DPW. There's a City of Kingston 511, 311 system. And they're very effective at responding to those complaints on the 311 system. And they've gone out almost immediately that's and repaired the cut. Because they say that even with graffiti, that that's the way yeah. 
that you can also help with mm-hmm. that. You really have to be very dedicated to coming in quickly and, you know. And it seems like it has been occurring less frequently. Mm-hmm. I, whenever I drive down Greek Hill, I try, the weeds are high now. There may be a cut in the fence, there may not be, but it doesn't appear as though the fence has been breached for um, a number of months now. Wow. So the, the, the other study that we're looking at, uh, and we have a draft scope on that I think NYSTAT has reviewed is the 9W corridor study. No, we haven't submitted the scope yet. Uh, we're still reviewing it okay. internally, but we've talked about the study. Yeah. So yeah, so that's gonna have to go to NYSTAT. We're, it's NYSTAT jurisdiction, but it's basically that section of, from the, the the old viaduct that went over, with over the CSX Railroad uh, by where the former Red Lobster used to be out to 209. Oh, okay. It's that yeah, section yeah. through there. Um, to look at pedestrian safety, uh, accident rates, uh, crash rates, uh, and uh, signal, signal timing. Signal timing and that's town of Ulster. Right? Yes, that's town right. of Ulster. And I think the next the next goal, of, the next study after that is probably going to move in and do Albany Avenue in Kingston. It's that four lane section of Kingston has multiple curb cuts, no four lanes, two, two lanes in each direction. Uh, to look at that, that's the next thing I think that we look at after this as we go through that that corridor out there that's traffic is building in those areas and uh, accident rates are up. I think nice not just eliminated left hand turns on one of the one of the, um, the the properties out there. So that's the next study that that we'll be rolling out uh, for that area as well. Yeah, turning into Hoffman. Yeah, yeah, it was Hoffman. That's right. Thanks. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So it's it affected it. three or four places. That's it. But I think that's Very a high accident area. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's the next. I think the next area that we'll we'll take a look at um, as well. So that's the that's the studies we're currently involved in. Um, staff has been pretty busy, but we also have finished and have copies of the long range mm-hmm. transportation plan. Yes. Right. Those of you who attended in person will get a parting gift yeah. today. So <laughs> you want to show them with that? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I think I had a copy of it uh, at the last meeting. So. I mean, I think that this just came out of me. Yeah, I'll get the cover letters before people go. So, yeah, so that's uh, done. It, it, it was uh, adopted, so we don't have to go through adoption. This is just a print copy of it. It is up on the website. Um, it is. This was done completely in house, and my congratulations and condolences to the staff that worked. Condolences. <laughs> um, but from mapping to, to graphics to all of that, I think it came out well. It's a, it's a highly, it's an educatable document, uh, and um, and the back of it gives you one of the things. I one of the back of it gives you some pretty decent. Um, information in terms of where we'd like to go from a, from a transportation uh, project standpoint. Uh, the really interesting thing in my mind was we had an opportunity in this document to put together something which I call, which got called, you know, uh, plans to plans to projects. Um, and the MPO has a, an excellent track record, I think mainly because we focused on things that are doable. Um, so we have an excellent track record of doing plans and and having those plans essentially be picked up by by the jurisdictions, uh, either the state and or others. Uh, and, 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 Mike the projects. and and that's Mike's and I, I, The examples I would the most recent example, obviously in my mind, is is the, uh, is the improvements in the Walco in the Walco Valley uh, Rail Trail, where it got picked up by Empire State. They had a document that they could go back to. And used to essentially move it right through it. They got through the 587 roundabout Broadway, the Kingston Broadway project. We did a bit of build, a building a better Broadway. Uh, we did that study for the for the city. Uh, they 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 credit they credit us the Sorgerties work. Um, we also they credit us with that. There's other there's other projects out there. I think that we can we can that, literally that is, say that <coughs> Voices Lane that, that, that intersection of Voices Lane. If we, if we ever get it done. Um, but um, I think th- those those are things that basically speak to the idea that if you not if you plan it they will build it but literally, literally if you can focus on things that meet a community need that are contextual in terms of helping the community see a better transportation future that you can actually you can actually influence the where money flows um, and I think that that's been that's been a hallmark of some of the things that that, that we've done.
done, and we certainly want to keep it that way. So I, I just want to say we did do a limited copy. These copies are intended for uh, the town. Um, they, they were rather expensive, so we only did 40 copies, so I apologize, but the full document is available uh, electronically online <laughs> as well. So we'll be working to get that distribution out to each municipality and the department um, and some department heads as well over the course of the next several weeks. You don't have to send our Okay, great. Thank you, Sandra. Um, one great. last item. Yep. Anything? Anything from? I just have one more. One There's more one item. item on the agenda left. Yep. It's, locally uh, sponsored. That's yep. what I was going to go to. Yep. Okay. Great. Okay. Locally sponsored federal aid uh, project updates. Um, May. I? Yes. Um, the we did uh, project updates during the last meeting. I wanted to. I mislabeled this in the agenda. I really wanted to talk about tip performance uh, for this agenda item. And I have a copy of uh, a report from this generated from ESTIP, the online um, uh, software that manages our tips statewide. And it shows um, all of the Ulster County locally sponsored federal aid projects that are scheduled with construction phases in 2022. I know that's a mouthful. We have 12 projects scheduled for construction in 2022, um, a number of which are Ulster counties, but they're distributed throughout the variety of uh, sponsors. So Sandra, with that introduction, uh, do you have uh, any words you'd like to say about tip performance and tip management? Well, I think it's really important and region-wide, we were on a real roll for like making some nice incremental improvements over like the past four years. But I do think last year, this past year, um, I think performance has tanked a little bit, but I think everyone understands why. You know, there's been a lot of financial uncertainty. But I think we really need to get back on track. And this list that Brian's referring to, anyone who has a project on this list needs to be very um, conservative, not optimistic on delivery. And if you know that, you know, you haven't even gotten through the environmental yet, or you know that there's going to be property taking, and you don't think you're going to be able to deliver it, we really should be pushing it into the next federal fiscal year for construction. Um, I, back in the office, I'm planning on sending it this week. We did an assessment, the local projects unit did an assessment of this project listing of their opinion you know, based on exactly everything I just said, where the project is and the likelihood of it being delivered or not. And they've actually reached out to the sponsors. Um, so I'll share that information with you. But, you know, we really have the month of August to, you know, make those decisions of doing, you know, tip action to push any of these projects that we think that aren't not gonna make it move. Now, I think 22 is pretty heavy with projects that didn't make it this year. Right. So you would think that they're probably ones to most likely be able to make it, hopefully, you know, unless they're really just not progressing. Um, so I'll, I'll share that information with your office this week, you know, kind of our thoughts. But I think in August, there really needs to be like some good communication on, okay, what are we going to do here? You know, we're going to keep it, we're going to move it. And the same goes for I think Ulster County just has one project left. In 2021. In 2021. Right. Um, and that's a, is that the rail trail project? No, it's a, the Tilson Avenue. Tilson. Yeah. yeah. So. And we, I think, have elected to move that to 2022. Okay. Yeah. During, and you're included on those conversations yeah. with Orietta. Yeah. Oh, it's, yeah. It is very close to making an obligation, that's but why risk i don't see the harm in pushing it off to 2022 well, especially when well, they're unknown at this point though the only harm is so so obviously we're gonna have a snapshot for next year okay and that's the project listing that just went around we have a snapshot that's taken that we're working with right now that one project that's left if it does make it it, it helps us because there's amended performance and unamended right yeah. They, the feds are really more interested in unamended performance. They want to see 
okay, what you say you're gonna do and what you end up doing. This secondary performance measure of amended performance is would be pushing folks now. I mean, that's gonna help you with your amended, but it's not gonna help you with your unamended. I, mean, I think the Tilson Avenue holdup is not, it, it's literally because they- It's right away, right? And so NEPA, much, so NEPA much, recertification. NEPA recertification is what it's going I know, I read well what they seem to do. And it was consultant really, I don't know. I didn't think it was as, so that decision, I, yeah. I mean, I, I defer it, to it, though, in August, local project. I'm trying unit. to be a little optimistic. Sure. I'm a little, just saying that Ulster County, I think you went into the year with like a handful of projects. I think every single one of them. I'm just saying nobody wants a zero. Yeah, I, I'm I not disagreeing. I know. And my, mine ended up in right away from an amendment domain procedure where we thought we would. Mm -hmm. we, we would there's good reasons for yeah. all of them. It just stinks, you know. And we may, we, we may, we have solved that right away. I can, this is a Kingston Rail Show. We've solved that right away problem <laughs> as of, I think, um, two weeks ago or three weeks ago. We, we have an, an agreement in principle. We're just filing maps now. That we amended so map. that's a really good project to definitely keep on 22, right? Yeah, oh, absolutely. Well, we, we, we would anticipate, yeah. be honest with you, we would anticipate building most of that in, in um, we think we can let this in, in probably November. Good. We're also we're, we're going to build it in phases that we're going to mainly because Central Hudson's involved and they got they got held up on their whole relocation. So, so next month, I think August, for the smaller MPOs, you guys can move quicker on your tip actions. So I think really like no later than August fifteenth, we should be like completely aligned on everything yeah. in twenty one as to twenty two, and everything in twenty two that needs to move to twenty three. How does that, you know what I mean? Because you guys can make changes quickly. Yeah. It's our bigger MPO where yeah. it takes so much more time. Yeah. So where, I, I, I'm going to ask you this question. I don't know what the answer I'm going to get is. Where are we with respect to the Word Street Bridge, which is a project that essentially was also, in, I think, oh, 2021. Oh, so, um, that was let, but okay. I don't think we have the letting results yet. Okay. But we right. will. You know, we'll we'll definitely, definitely make it that with you. Yeah, as soon as we hear anything. Anything else? I have one other item, um, and that has to do with uh, rail safety. Um, we are getting um, some feedback from Riverkeeper with respect to a bridge, uh, rail bridge that exists along the Hudson River uh, down by Highland and Blue Point. It's opposite the city of Poughkeepsie. It looks like I got some pictures on it. It looks like it's cobbled together. Um, With Lincoln logs? Well, it, it, it actually looks like yeah, they looks did like. Is, is the middle section of the bridge abutment has disappeared. So it looks like what CSX did is they actually put concrete concrete uh, ballast within the within the stream itself, and then and then and then cribbed up to the bridge itself to hold the bridge up. Um, so. Um, We've, I've reached out to CSX, NYSDOT, and um, and uh, in FRA uh, with regard with regard to that. So, um, and Riverkeeper CC'd everybody. What's so the name of this bridge crossing? It, it's not a name. It's it's I don't know the stream. It's it's just north of Highland. It's on it's it's right on the Hudson River. It's it's the main. It's on the West Shore. Just called. It's right right by Blue Point. I'll send you the pictures. Yeah, I'll send you the pictures so you have. But yeah. Just be out there. I, we're we're going to we're probably going to ask for some response from the railroad uh, with respect to this. It, it's a pretty it's a pretty it it looks it looks like <laughs> it looks, I was like what <laughs> when you look I'll send you the pictures. I take a look at it. It's actually bridge over to Black Creek. No 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 no. I, I it's not Black Creek. I know it's it's south of Black Creek. And I don't yeah. know. Close to? Could be. I I should have got the, I should have got the stream name. I didn't. I apologize. But I did. But just be aware out there that there, there's been some focus on this. Yeah. Oh, I'll say, yeah. It, it's pretty interesting. I can about guarantee you that this is a solution that the guys working in the field came up with to solve the problem. And we've got to ask questions after that. I'm, I'm, <clears> I'm just even wondering whether they got a DEC permit to put the stuff in the stream. I think it's just what I had to get it. But then, anyway, that's that's side point. Any any other business in front of the council? Uh, I have no other business. Uh, just a reminder that 
the UCTC policy committee is scheduled to meet on August 24th, 2021. We still uh, are required to have an in-person quorum. So if you are able to attend in person, please do, if you're a voting member. I will be a voting member. Okay, good to know. Yeah, let, us, let us know as early as possible, because I don't want to call everybody here and not have a quorum. Right. Um, all right, Mr. Morrow? Just food for thought, talking about traffic safety. The folks in, in Ulster County and any county in the state who are most in touch with highway safety are the, the various First highway responders. departments yep. and the police departments. And I know most of the police departments, including town of Ulster, don't have a traffic safety division. Um, and I'd like to see, and I think it would be who safety in general, if we could encourage the county executive and, and this this council here to encourage all highway departments and police departments to establish one where when a police officer or a highway department uh, employee notices a deficiency in traffic safety that they have a reporting venue where they can send it through and somebody who with some expertise can look at it before the problem exacerbates and something bad happens. That's a you know, great, and that's there's a all kinds suggestion. of things. Um, you know, case in point, we had talked about Lakes Mills Road at, at the uh, railroad crossing there coming off of 9W and no stop sign just to the um, west of that. And there was a lot of traffic problems there and horn blowing every day. And you'd have to drive that intersection every day to, to know about it. Uh, the people, you know, Serena Court, that is, right? Me? Serena Court, is that Serena Court, yeah. Um, yeah. where Legs Mills Road yeah. turns right uh, and breaks off. Who put the stop sign up? The county put the stop sign up. No, I did. I know they yeah. did. And quite frankly, it has saved a lot of problems at that intersection. Yeah. Um, it took a while for people to realize there's a stop sign there, but now it's like really nice. Uh, there's all kinds of traffic things happening that are very, very unsafe. Like, at that same same spot at the rail crossing, uh, the school buses stop within 50 feet of the railroad crossing to discharge and pick up kids. And the problem is that um, westbound school bus going across the railroad tracks will stop about 50 to 100 feet past the railroad tracks with a line of traffic behind it, and cars are stopping on the railroad track with the School bus turns red lights on and nobody can pass. So they're just stuck because they, instead of thinking about, I'm not going to stop on the tracks, mm -hmm. they're surprised by the school bus stopping there because they don't realize it's going to happen. And there shouldn't be a school bus. And even when the school bus is coming the other direction and stops, it's, it works as, it works both ways for school buses. You know, yeah. it's just a terrible place for a school bus to pick up and discharge kids. Yeah, got it. But, Got you know, it. if the police officers and highway department people who see this every day had a reporting venue, okay. um, all kinds of great things could happen. So, and I, I, I take that suggestion to heart and we'll certainly mention it. One of the things that you should know is, is that um, we're having internal discussions about the traffic safety board. Um, it's a traffic safety board. It, that's some, some of that function actually exists with it. In traffic. We used to have a, we used to have a traffic safety committee of, of the of UCTC, but it, we sort of put it back, put it back on the traffic safety board to, to do some of this work. Mm -hmm. We're having internal discussions uh, about the traffic safety board and the idea of basically the MPO uh, inserting itself into. We we do go to the traffic safety board meetings, but inserting itself as leadership for the for the traffic safety board that rests with uh, both the county executive from an appointment standpoint and from the county legislature with respect to confirmation of that appointment. So that's an internal discussion. We and we may head in that direction. Brian needs more things to do. I'm a licensed school bus driver. That's a little known fact. Anything else? <laughs> well, thank you so all for much. coming. We appreciate it. Have, enjoy the rest of your summer uh, and stay healthy. Right. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, take some bagels thank you, you to everyone who joined us online. I apologize for any technical issues we may have had. We'll work on improving our audio and visual quality going forward. The work is fine. Thanks. Great. Thank you all. Thank you.